Hey guys, Becky here with Creative Fabrica, and I'm super excited to have you join us today because we have a really great, fun, seasonal project for you for Valentine's Day. A little bit of vinyl and a few candles, and you can make your very own home decor with these really adorable gnomes. All right, guys, so here we are, of course, back on Creative Fabrica. And I have chosen this really cute Valentine Gnomes SVG bundle because the project that we're working on has three separate designs. And as you can see from this bundle, you can really mix and match to get some pretty cute, uh, we'll call them trios. We'll do a gnome trio. And what I want to do is go ahead and download to my computer. Now what that's going to do is it's going to download a zipped folder into my downloads folder. So once it's done downloading, I'm going to click. It will open up a file explorer window. And what I want to do is extract. All right. Now I'm just going to let it extract also to my downloads folder. So those just kind of hang out together. And once the extraction is complete, I'm going to head on over um, and check out which gnomes I want to use. So I'm going to locate my unzipped folder, which is right here. I can double click and we'll open the main file. And I do want color gnomes because we're going to layer. And let me show you real quick. I can open the SVG and you'll see it just lists them out by number. So a lot of times what I'll do is take a look at the PNGs and it'll show previews. So then I can make note of which ones I want to use. Now, even on our project, these gnomes will still be a little on the small side. So I don't want to choose a design, in my opinion, that's super detailed. Like as much as I absolutely love this guy here, I know that cutting the small details here on the balloon will be really difficult. Same with the hearts through here. Okay. So I'm going to stick with, for example, uh, this one here is pretty cute. I will probably get this guy sitting down. And then, I mean, really any of them would be fine, but I'm just going to stick with the, um, the simpler ones. So we can make notes. So we want four, four, three, and then we want do to do four, five, one, and then let's do four, four, five. So four, four, three, four, five, one, four, four, five, four, four, three, four, five, one, four, four, five. Okay, so what I can do is just go ahead and open up Cricut Design Space. And from my canvas here, I'm just going to go to Upload, Upload Image, and Browse. I'm going to go back into that same SVG. And do you guys remember which numbers you wanted? If not, you can click back over and check out the previews again. All right, once you have them all, you can go ahead and click them from your recent downloads. You can click them and choose add to canvas and it'll bring all three in at one time. Now they came in um, a little larger than anticipated, so you can size them down. What I'm going to do is select them individually and I know that I don't want them any wider than two and a half inches. So I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna come up here to my size double click in the width and just type in 2.5. And now all three of them are in a more manageable size. Now I also, because these will be a trio, I also want to line these up and make sure that they look proportionate to each other. So for example, this one is a little wider. Um, it looks a little wider because of these hearts here. So what I can do is make them a little bigger. And same with this one, because it has the little tips that come out from the beard. I can make him a little bigger because those are the parts that are going to wrap around uh, the sides of our candle. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Now, if you're wondering how this is going to cut, it is going to cut in colors. So we can go ahead and ungroup them. I'm going to ungroup them one by one because what I want to be able to do is select 
all the light colors and attach those together so they stay in place. Okay. And this is something you want to check out on all of your files. And let me show you why, because if I click over to make it right now without attaching, then Cricut Design Space, and they're trying to give you, um, you know, they're trying to be frugal with your, your vinyl, but all these pieces end up individual and that's not what I want. So I want them to be in place. So I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to select these red pieces and hit attach. Oh, we got the beard on that one. So definitely be careful. You can also come over here on your right hand side and select them this way if you want. It's completely up to you. So I want the heart and see how when I click on it, it selects it over here. I'm still holding down shift. The hat, the boot and the boot. And I'm going to attach those. Now I can move them off to the side. They don't have to stay there. I'm going to do the same with the nose and the hands. Attach those. And then the beard. Okay, so that that is done. That one is done. So let's head on over to this one. And then basically I'm going to go through and repeat those steps for the other two gnomes. So I won't bore you with that, but I'll take care of it. And then we will reconvene and talk about some other things that we need to check out for this design. And then another thing to pay attention to, I don't know if you noticed, but all of these kind of fit together, okay? They've been subtracted out so that you can layer them together. Now that doesn't matter during the cutting process, that only matters during the actual layering. So um, we will talk about that more when it's time for our hands-on project. Now I don't have to put these back together. What I can do is just click over to make it and I'm gonna show you um, exactly what all that attaching accomplished. So if I come over to the black, you'll see my boots stay together, my noses and my hands stay together, and the uh, the red on my gnomes stay together. I am gonna have a total of four cutting mats. I'm gonna start with the white and work my way down. And that's important to remember as you're working through your workflow, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. Now this is going to go ahead and um, Bluetooth to my Cricut Maker. And of course you can do this with uh, any model of Cricut. The vinyl that I like to choose for my default is going to be the premium outdoor vinyl. It just works well for me. That's what I'm used to using. I'm going to leave my pressure at default. And what I'm going to do is walk over to my Cricut and I'm going to load this in in order. So it's not a bad idea to have your computer handy. It also comes in handy when we go to layer because I'll be able to come back and look at um, those files to make sure I'm layering appropriately. Okay. And because we're doing three separate gnomes, I'll be able to show you uh, both methods of layering. So let's go ahead and head on over and we'll take a look at everything. All right, guys, so what we have here is a cutting mat. I have my four colors, white, black, the uh, nude color, beige color, and red, a little bit of transfer tape. Now these are the candles that we're gonna use, All right, They do come from the dollar store, so very inexpensive. And then I have some weeding tweezers and a scraper. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and load my first color, which just double check in your software and make sure you're following along, but mine should be white. I'm going to load it on here, then I will load the mat into my machine. Now it should pick up on the design that uh, where it connected Bluetooth and I can just choose the uh, press the Cricut button when it starts flashing. So once the white is finished, I'm going to unload. Now what I'll do is remove the vinyl from this mat. Now sometimes if it's a little sticky, you can actually peel the mat from the vinyl. Sounds a little backwards, I know, but it keeps your vinyl sheet from curling up so bad. What I'm going to do is load the black and proceed to cut through the whole process. And I'll repeat this for each color that I have. All right, so just make sure if you have any doubts that you do check the workflow in your software to make sure you're loading the right color.
So now if you noticed, I was weeding and cutting apart as we were going along. That's because we know that each one of these is going to be for a different gnome. All right, and we will need to look at them individually to make sure that we uh, line them up with the other pieces that they belong to. But if you're not familiar with weeding, what I did was I took my sheet and you can see, hopefully you guys can see the cut lines, but I basically just pierce with my weeding tweezers on the, under the edge. And as long as I got a good cut with my machine, which of course I did with this one, then I can simply just pull back and it will remove the parts of the vinyl that I don't need. Now, if I have any inside pieces like I do up here, then what I'm going to do is just use my tweezers and pull it out from the inside. All right, so these are my finished pieces. Now, let's see, this one went with the middle. Well, let's go ahead and cut these apart. Okay, so this beard went here and then it had red shoes, so no black, and then it should have a nose and hands. So let's see, nope, that one's too big. It might have been this one. It was probably this one. I'm gonna believe it's that one. So then this one here, too big. Let's see. If you hold it up, you can see with the light uh, underneath it. Some people also use like a, a weeding lamp. All right, so this beard here, this beard here. Now let's take a look at the shoes because the shoes should line up also. So these boots, they should be at the bottom here, I believe. And then these boots are here at the bottom of that one. Okay, so when in doubt, you can, like I said, absolutely go back and consult that PNG file um, or consult the file that is loaded in Cricut Design Space. Um, but we also want to be careful that we're going to um, line these up. So for example, this one, I know that the beard has to go underneath the heart. Okay, does that make sense? So they'll have to go in this order. And I know that the nose goes on top and then the shoes, uh, they go on kind of whenever. So we can put those on last. And then we'll do the same here. I know that the beard goes on first, then the gnome, then the nose. And then we have the same thing. It'll be the beard, the gnome, the nose, and then we can do the shoes. All right, so let's talk about how this actually happens. And we'll start, we can start with the easiest one. I just want a piece of transfer tape that's going to cover my entire design. Trim off the extra. And you can go ahead and remove it from the backing right there. Now I saved that backing so that when I'm done, if I want to, I can set the whole finished design on top of it. But what I wanna do is I am going to grab in this order, okay? Because I'm layering from top to bottom. So with my design covered, I'm just gonna pull out the nose. I just wanted to make sure that I'm getting it in the approximate area. Now I have a little scraper. And pull the nose up, okay? Piece of cake. Now, let me just say, I'm not going for an exact layering process. There are um, a lot of really great ways to line up your layered design, uh, one of which includes using registration boxes, and we'll do a separate video on that for you. I'm just, this is more of an approximate layering design here. Now, if you ever have any problems getting your vinyl lifted from the backing, sometimes it helps to turn it over. All right, now let's take a look at this too because I don't want, see how small this is in comparison? I don't want to stick my vinyl to something else. So I can leave this here, okay? That way when my vinyl touches down, it touches the back of my transfer tape. Does that make sense? 
Let's see if we can line this baby up. I feel like it's gonna be more importantly down here at the bottom where the shoes are. So I can actually cover this back up if I want. So it doesn't touch down by accident and it just leaves the shoes exposed. Okay, now I can remove that part and smooth it down. And see, for the most part, I don't have to worry about my vinyl touching down. All right, so with that done, I should be able to peel the entire layered design up and it's all layered here on my transfer tape. Okay, that's the benefit, especially when you're using a curved surface um, than trying to layer individual layers on your candle. But it did promise you two ways, so we will also do a layering project on the candle itself. All right, now if you have something that you can kind of butt your candle up against, it just helps to keep it from rolling. And then line this baby up. All right, so I let it touch down, and on a curved surface, I'm gonna start in the middle. I'm gonna smooth the middle down, and then I'm gonna work my way around. Now I shouldn't really need to, but I can bring my squeegee in if I want to smooth it down really, really well. And then I can just start removing the transfer tape. All of my layers stay adhered. Okay, so I think that came out really, really cute. So we have candle number one done. All right, so let's set that down and let's move on to the next one. So we will do this one. And we're going to start from the bottom up this time, okay? Because we're gonna layer on the actual candle itself. So a little bit more complicated. So the first thing that I wanna do is just try to figure out how much room I need to leave at the bottom. So I'll line up the bottom of my transfer tape because, and, and that's another hard part, is the actual positioning, okay? But now, if I take my candle, I know that I lined up the bottom so I can line up the bottom with the bottom of my candle and go ahead and put my beard down, okay? Now this is, this is very common. A lot of beginners layer this way, so it's completely up to you. Like I said, I do prefer having the uh, the complete decal on there first, but it's a uh, it's kind of a personal preference. Okay, so now, and it it is harder to line up this way, but we're going to line up on our design here. So again, set something there to try to keep it from rolling. A lot of people also put this in their lap, so if you're not working on a table, you can uh, you can set it down in your lap. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cover up the part that I don't want to touch down yet. And I can just line up the bottom. All right, so line it up and then press it down. Same thing, we're gonna start in the middle and then work our way out. And then next will be the nose. And then we have the boots. So we do have a couple mistakes on this one. I did start my design too high, which is what I was afraid of. I thought I was doing a good job with, um, with setting it up first. I did not in fact, and I was so confident in my two and a half inches that I did not measure the top. So as long as I'm not gonna use this for, you know, actually use the candle, it's not a big deal, uh, but you definitely don't want to leave vinyl uh, hanging over an open flame, okay? So the black shoes should've went on bottom. Um, I also did not get perfect alignment. You can't see it too much because the candle is white behind it, uh, but I definitely have some gaps in my vinyl here. So I just wanted to show you for comparison, I feel like this way, is much easier than this way. But we have one more, so you get what I consider the difficult one in the middle. I'm gonna show you one more time just how easy it is to layer it all on the transfer tape before applying it, 
Okay, so I'm going to start, yes, with the nose. So remember, we're going top, working our way down. So nose in the middle. Now I've reused this transfer tape quite a few times and of course, every time you use it, um, it loses a little bit more of its stickiness. So just keep that in mind, but I do absolutely love reusing my transfer tape. All right, so I have mixed up the noses here. So what I'm going to do is I will place these hands by hand. There is always a way, well, I, I guess I don't wanna say always, but there's usually a way to save your projects if something were to happen like this. Now I'm going to put my nose. All right, and I need to get my beard, so I'm bringing in that uh, the backing for the transfer tape again, and I'll cover up the top part of my hat. So now this needs to be lined up just a little bit more exact because that line runs right on the seam of the beard. And now all we need to do is add the shoes. And now we have one more completed decal. And we can simply grab our candle, line this bad boy up, touch down in the middle, and then work our way around the sides. All right, so let's look at our three candles here. One, two, and three. I'm gonna put this one in the middle because the other two have black shoes, but hopefully you guys enjoyed our little demonstration. Now, of course, these are still really, really cute. I'm not unhappy with this project, especially considering my total investment is under $5. Um, you can make them a little smaller, especially if you want to wrap the top in any type of decorative ribbon or anything like that. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the difference in the two different, we'll say most common uh, ways to layer the vinyl, which is one, to go ahead and layer it on the transfer tape, and then number two, to layer it on your project. So I'm definitely a fan of layering it on the transfer tape. I'm much more comfortable with it. I feel like my projects turn out better. And overall, these are my really cute seasonal Valentine home decor candles. They're really inexpensive to make. And of course, in my personal opinion, I think they turn out really, really cute. And hopefully you do too. So guys, overall, how did you feel about our candle project? And like I said, it's very inexpensive very simple and you know what it's a really great way to practice your vinyl layering because these are glass and if you get done with the project and you decide that you're not happy with it you can actually remove the vinyl straight away and try again or try with another project it's completely up to you so super fun super simple super cheap and really great for beginners so hopefully you guys will find yourself enjoying these simple projects now of course if you have any questions or comments definitely make sure you leave that down below. You know, I always love hearing from you. I love helping you out when I can. And make sure you subscribe to the channel. All right, keep supporting our channel so that we can keep bringing you these really awesome videos. And I'm gonna wrap it up for today, guys, but thanks for stopping by. I do really appreciate it, and we'll see you again next time.